Stacy. Stacy. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hi. Amalia? Yes. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Janice. Hi. Hi, Janice. Hi, Stacy. Amalia. Nice to meet you. Hi, Catalina. Amalia. Nice to meet you. I am really excited about this show, and I was telling Justin Ashley, I was like, the show is what? It's with a capital Y. Yeah. To put it lightly. The introduction, we kind of get our three core girls and you understand kind of the the way that they relate to each other and in the ways that they definitely don't. <laughs> yeah. But then we also get the introduction of your character, he's kind of a foil and you're kind of a little bit of a mystery, you know, yeah. causing some trouble, you know, taking some drugs, <laughs> you know, yes. so, um, yeah, it's guilty. <laughs> um, tell me, A, when you saw the script. What went through your mind? Like, just wow. <laughs> well, well, well. I mean, yeah, you put a word to it. Uh, no, it was. How can something be written this original in this day and age? And uh, on a, on a major is so hard. Everything's yes. just redone. Same themes, same narratives. And and you know, as an actor, getting those auditions all the time, you see so much repetition. And it's like, how can I put a new spin on this? Yeah. And Elliot and Freeform really. Really did it for us. Spin and just a turn. Right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> oh, oh right. just edgy, man. The pilot as well. Like there, that was the whole universe. When we shot the pilot, we were like, "Well, this was the first season, wasn't it?" Right. And they were like, "Really? It's gonna be feel like that." <laughs> so, really did that feel like that. And it, it's just, you know, it's, it's also so current, but especially with the, the right. releasing. We're, they're talking about war, and you know, you see all over the media. They're like, "Well, women want to be treated as equals. Why aren't they conscripted to war?" Mm-hmm. So you know, it's you're bringing such current idealisms um, to the media at this time, you know, and it's, it's it's so many great messages, you know, about mental health and using resources, and um, that there's just, you know, so many communities brought to one, and it's it's just so, it's looked at as yes. so neutral, and I, I, someone made a great point earlier about, you know, as long as we keep pointing out differences and pointing out diversity, like, how does it feel to work on such a diverse show? It's like, the fact that you have to ask that question you know, means there's still that segregation. So that's right. something that we're trying to break with mm-hmm. this show, which I think is so profound and very liberating. Yeah. And I, what, I, what I also what I love about uh, in the pilot already, uh, you can see that no matter what in like, what your um, perspective on going to Port Salem was and your opinion on, well, the way the world is arranged right. in this world, no one can not, like, no one can really oppose the... How it's a free space for witches. Like it's really it's like separatism as a, at its best in that yeah. sense. One and place of unity for, yes. for people that are sort of cast as outsiders or feared. Right. Yeah, so that's that's a very beautiful uh, thing that was included in the narrative. Well, it, it kind of brings together where you know we're talking about like the diversity of the show. Mm-hmm. It is very diverse, and there's an importance to that. But part of that importance is making it so that. Diversity is the umbrella. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing that kind of affects and there's everybody. No, yeah. There's no attention drawn umbrella. to it. It's just mm-hmm. how it exactly. is, which I think is so beautiful, and I want to see that incorporated, and I want to inst- instill that in the mindsets of the youth that will be watching the show, and any of the viewers that will be watching the show. I think that's such a great message to put across. Yeah, finding the things that kind of connect us outside of. Yeah, the oh, 100%. Yeah. Yes, and that's all. Yeah, that's all. That's so much about the universe. That Elliot has created. Right. There's a universe without segregation in that sense. The segregation is between witches and civilian, and that is a very vast segregation. Mm-hmm. But that's the one. So therefore, right. within witches, there's uh, not in that sense, um, and there's no heteronorm. And they're drawing right. attention to witches. the right places. Um, yeah. And uh, in the sense where they're, you know, they're saying this is segregation. This is what it's costing humanity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is what war is doing. To humanity, so you know I really think they're drawing uh, attention to the right places here. You know, I've been I've been asking all the, all the ladies, what was your idea of magic and witchcraft before the the show, and how has it changed or stayed the same? To me, it was basically Harry Potter, like Harry Potter all the way, <laughs> like Harry That's Potter, amazing. like yes. internalized <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> well, Sweden has their own totally different yes. take on witches and the, the witch trial so like yeah. hearing oh, wow. the Swedish history of that was something that I, I never even imagined was no in, in Sweden but to this day in like in Eastern uh, I, no um, 
by Easter. Um, children dress up as Easter witches and go up. Basically, your Halloween, like the American Halloween, knock on doors and you give out little posters and you say, Happy Easter! But as a witch, and then you're, you've got your little broom, and then you're off to uh, blow a kula, it's called. And it's, uh, yeah. Uh, little, so, little, okay, uh, I'm researching this as well. I'm right. Right. So, so, I But there were I heavy witch trials <laughs> in Sweden as well. Like, there's, uh, there's a, at one trial, 77 uh, people, innocent people were killed in one trial uh, of witches. witches. And then in a period of eight years, 300 people were killed in witch trials. Because it was just an epidemic of trials. Right. Of, uh, Witch hunting in Sweden. Yes, they did, and also they were getting points from the church. Uh, but it was just very, a very toxic uh, transition in Swedish history. Uh, so, uh, I, I had researched Wiccan culture prior to this, and it was something that, uh, you know, I, I went through a place in, I'd say, like my late, late teen years, where I was like, "Am I religious?" I've always posted myself as like an atheist, and I was like. Who is my God? Like, to me, who is my God? And I think that, you know, in your teen years, that's something that everyone navigates. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like that self-identity. And where do I want to look to? Where, like, I want answers. Um, when you're so confused, in, you know, <laughs> in the midst of puberty. So I, I, I was sort of researching all these different things. And I was like, you know, spirituality really intrigued me. But it's such a broad umbrella term. And so I, I eventually got into researching uh, Wiccan culture. Wiccan. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, I, if you take one look at my bedroom, you can get it. <laughs> I have, like, hung dried flowers everywhere, and uh, I do I do a lot of, like, uh, practices and rituals. And even little things like saging, which is quite quite common, right, to, yeah, but it's, it's sort of originated from Wiccan culture. So just things like that, sort of, um, I've always been interested in energies, and um, it was felt, I believe, like, I, I had a very strong sense of intuition in terms of, that and so I was just trying to deep further my uh, connection there and deepen my connection. So yeah, I, I researched a bit. I have like a massive crystal collection, uh, and I've, I've tried a witch practices. wannabe, a witch wannabe. <laughs> yeah, just a, witch, be a witch wannabe. <laughs> but I have not joined officially joined the witch culture. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> to be clear, when you found out about your character, yeah, that big kiss. I don't know how far you guys have gone. Yeah, I so that's that why I'm not. I'm how not, how far have you watched? Um. Episode six, six. Um, so we're, we're, we're we haven't okay. even seen, them. but we've read them. So, so I mean, did. we also did them. We did, did them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so there. So there. Okay. So that big. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Your reaction. <laughs> What was like your, your total reaction about it, and what do you see going forward with that? Character? I'm sorry, I don't know which big part you're okay. thinking because there's like in every episode oh, there's a big thing with me. It's on you that you haven't watched. Um, the twist with the um, lighter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, that moment. Oh, that's, that's in episode one. Is it in episode one? Yeah, it's more like two. Yeah, that's in lighter. The twist with the lighter. Yeah. The first time that's introduced, that idea is. Yeah. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Well, I just. It was so powerful to be portraying so and that is a dangerous power if you I mean I don't want to go into like details of integrity and today you can make a fake profile on it, Facebook and all that but, but we don't have it, it has, media on there so that yeah. kind of is the yeah that too, it's like sort of like touching that idea there yeah but so that idea so just the morals of integrity that's just completely thrown off board and she's just going way into that uh, because she fights for a good cause, and uh, the way she sees it, the world, the world is li like really, uh, really messed up, and no witch is free until all witches are free, and they're not free in this world. The conscription from such early day, and the thing that their their existence is limited and marginalized within the system, they're they're um, being born to be cannon food. Um, they're not really allowed to have a real uh, and proper. They're condemned from birth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's being witch hereditary in this. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Very. Okay. Yeah. Because there was a lot of talk about that. I kind of wonder what the difference. I think Riel's a mud blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, half, she's, half. she's half. Yeah. That's half witch. Yeah, she's half witch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mud I witch. love Riel's kind of uh, inner obstinance. That kind of thing of like. Oh, I just want to be front line, but it's more that you can, that she's also a healer. Yeah. 
yeah. and she does kind of help the people in her community. And kind of, I think she does that into a homage to her mother. Right, right, yeah, exactly. And so there's that caring there, despite saying, "Well, I don't care, just you know, I'll just die, it doesn't matter." Yeah, she's very deeply emotional. I think eternally, it's just she's like, you know, expressing that emotion throughout her life has won her nothing. It hasn't, yeah. it hasn't gotten her anywhere. Her being generous and her being vulnerable with other people has only caused her loss. So in her mind, she just retracts and, and it, it projects in the form of mistrust with everybody. You know, she doesn't let anyone in and I think she distanced herself from her father. And so that sense of isolation walking into this, she's she's feeling reckless and, and desperate. And she's like, if that's, if that's where I'm gonna end up anyways, like if, watching my mother who worked so hard and was so good at what she did, and that was still her same fate, Right. And what is the sense of me trying when I should just get it over with? That's very deep. What uh, <laughs> kind of perspective does your character come from? Because I haven't seen past the first episode, so I don't even know your intro. You plant yeah. the seed you're, for me to, you're like, you plant the seed, you're like, you're not harnessing your power yeah. in the way you, you right. can. Which is manipulative, yeah. but it's also yeah. supportive it's very in true. Yes. Right. But, but you tap into that place where you make me feel special and wanted and like I, I do have a place and, and that I do have support and someone I can lean on and they get turned she starts to slowly let her unit in right? you know she has something to work towards it gives her you give her purpose yeah and um, same in many ways was your question about my character's past yes yes, yes so she's uh she's coming from a, she's been living really really as an outcast I I mean can I spoil to you guys or how does that work uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Big spoil. Big spoil. Yeah. She's been living outside of the system, okay. so yeah. to say. Um, undercover her entire life. So what does that create in a person? It creates an emptiness, a non-belonging, never and you don't have a landmark. Paranoia. Never yeah. no still landmark. In a place you never to be rooted. You don't have a home. You have no roots. You have no landmark. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's really hard for a person to you know, to feel secure within themselves when they don't have a place place to feel like they belong. It's, it was your parents, so when you have that taken away from you, it's just like, you're lost. Yeah. That's crazy. I love this little interaction. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. but, I love, I'm so fascinated with her character and her background. Like, I've asked Elliot and her so many questions. I will say, I love how passionate everybody in the cast is about their characters, yeah. about the story, about... <laughs> I mean, each other a whole day of press and everyone would like have so much to say about all the characters and all their backgrounds and all of their purposes and their main fight and their main feature and all of them. Like we're all very invested in it. Oh, Elliot has said that a lot of you guys are like her characters. So how much do you guys agree or disagree? <laughs> well um, I don't think he was talking about the two of us specifically. <laughs> Jessica is Jessica. Not, period. period. Yeah. Is Ashley not. is Abigail. Uh, yes. yeah. Period. Right, Point blank. Period. <laughs> like they're saying themselves too, right? Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's it's even when you break down like history, like Jess breaking out of South America to come, like follow her dream and and, and pursue um, adventure. Like that's that's really what happened in her real life, you know, and then. Ashley too, like she's she was just very fortunate growing up and, and in her circumstances, and so I think she was able to utilize some of that in playing Abigail. Yeah. She's also like Leo is hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, she's very Leo. Like all of her planets are in Leo, and it shows. It's hilarious. She's so much fun. Very true. <laughs> very big personality. I think we most of us are. Though. Okay. Um. Yes. And, I mean, I like think so. struggles and hardships. Yeah. Sure. Well, you're very different from your character too. Uh, but that a lot of it has to do, I think, with the fact that we're both such big sisters, <laughs> and we both have uh, so many siblings, <laughs> and uh, will that will show? <laughs> and our characters are both uh, loners, so <laughs> I think so much of that is like there's just something in that that, that will have our have us distance from our characters. Uh, but I would relate to Scylla in the sense that when she. She has a very strong need of doing the right thing, and um, but she's brave in a way that I'm I'm brave or it's naive uh, in this <laughs> reckless in this, and she's lost everything. So right. she she can she has nothing to lose. lose exactly. So she'll just go headfirst into oh passionate love story, oh uh, um, fighting for freedom. She's like yeah, yeah. slash terrorism, <laughs> um, depending on what you think. So try it all on. <laughs> yeah. 
So you heard that you had to go through boot camp. That, that scene was not actually... That was an actual scene that you guys did. Oh yeah, <laughs> not, not fake. But it was like... The it mud. Was bitching <laughs> mud. Because it was made out of like shredded coconut. Like it was... It, it, it was it. like it's kind of like a spa treatment, but it, it felt grittier than mud. Oh. So it was a lot more painful. But um, it didn't have any of like the bacteria, so I think that was kind of their main concern. But yeah, through the rain towers, uh-huh. and it was like a really cold morning in uh-huh. I think, April, and that was our first uh, our first scene together as a unit. And bond. Yeah, that's, I was <laughs> like, you know they did that on her. You know they did that lucky. I know because my cause, because my my magic is so different, so I don't need to. Uh, I'm not going to be in the front lines uh, in that same way. There was no speaking in that scene, which I thought was very interesting to sort of is and build, build that trio. Uh, but I, I, I <laughs> right? exactly. <laughs> but when, when I slipped down the gate, that she crawled over, and there's that like that connect with eye yes. contact with Abigail. That is I, like in in person, I was just like something something clicked, and I was like, this is different. This is going somewhere, mm-hmm. and it just. I don't know. She gave me shivers with that look, and I was like, <laughs> this is something special, for sure. When you read the script, was this one of those jobs that was like, I have to have it, I have to have this character, I want this? I don't ever do that, because it always breaks yeah. my heart. Oh, it does, yeah. yeah and I did I still do this? Yeah. <laughs> I tell myself that every time. And they actually, the casting process was absolutely nuts. They, like... Oh my god. So you guys do have a lot of chemistry on screen. We do. Oh, yeah. And it was very apparent in the first scene that was shown in the pilot. So that was, it was a really good, did you find like, when you were doing the screen test, did you find that connection instantly or was that something you worked on? Screen tests are, I mean, you're There's so nervous. There's two totally There's different so, people. Like yeah. for me, it was me and a girl that not only physically looked entirely different yeah. from me, just her demeanor was entirely different. Yeah. Yeah. So two different takes on this character. And then my, uh, my friend, who was going out for Scylla. Those are to- very different, yeah. Very different, yes. To- two totally different reads. So I was, we were not sure which way it was going to go. You know, it really could have gone either way. It's more about preference because there was nothing com- comparable about either character that was coming in for readings. They all no, did such different readings. 100%. I think they just trusted us in creating that chemistry right to. later on because I don't think it was something we could show that well in, right. in that read, but... Just when we had our first uh, rehearsal together, mm-hmm. which was like two days before starting to shoot, it all fell in place. It all just fell in place. And you, you, don't, you don't have that same nerve to start to shoot. No, exactly. And you really can be comfortable and you're like, okay, really do you want to get to know this person? And, you know, we really need to find our, our common ground. And the fact that it happens well, organically, regardless, was a blessing. Well, that's the same. There are lots of shows that have those scenes where like the two kids are you know getting wrapped to each other and they get interrupted it's like, it's like of course you're gonna get interrupted <laughs> oh wait sorry and so um i like so that you guys really were kind of like wrapped up in each other and, and the ears going around and the thought had me personally like someone's gonna come and catch them and so when you know i think it's demetria's character uh, anacostia who shows up you know but yeah. i thought that chemistry was definitely there and it so well. It was so fun to play with. Pulling you into drugs. Right. You know, waiting up. And she made it look cool. I'm like, oh, well, if she's doing it. Right. I'm so happy. Come join me. And when she's also, hot, I'll, I guess I'll go for it. It also kind of showed um, Rael's kind of desperation to feel that, to have someone actually come and kind of like acknowledge her. And that sense of like, danger, you know, she, right. so she's still getting that sense of breathlessness, like this is not something I should be doing. I think that's also part of the attraction. Right. And especially when Demetria starts saying, stay away from her, I'm like, I need to have right. this. Now I need to have this, because someone's explicitly telling me I cannot have it. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's all part of that, that chase. And I think I, I, like, I myself have that in common with Rail. Like, when I see something I like, I have to have it. I have to have it. And nothing, nothing stands in the way of that. I'm, I'm quite, quite persistent that way, and I think that danger was sort of a, a, a component of attraction to, to Scylla. And I feel like Scylla saw that in Rail and really played off you it. You used it. You used it. Mm-hmm. But then, all of a sudden... Scylla's standing there with her heart in her hand. Like, what? I didn't know that was supposed to happen. No. No. Uh, Because she wasn't the easy prey. Like, she wasn't too walking about her. And also, she saw Scylla back in a way that was completely unexpected. 
She was just there too. We heard each other. Yeah. We saw each other, and like that's that's really all you can ask for is to really feel heard and listened to. And you were there for me when no one else was giving me that space to, to be myself. You know, no one, yes. no one else. They were trying, and I think that that's. And right I was like, but these people aren't going to understand. No one can ever understand my pain and my loss and my grief. So having and, someone yeah. such a kindred spirit but give also, me that space. How Riel is struggling almost throughout the season. No, she's not struggling. It comes very easy to her to be so non-judgmental, which is also such a key component in a love relationship. Like, like you have you want to be seen without being judged, and you want to be supported without being pushed. Yeah. And it's just you didn't see me as a rebel. You didn't see me as because yeah. you know when you made the first comment to me about skipping, you know I'm like, aren't you skipping class? Yeah, I'm like, are you? Like, aren't you? And I'm like, oh we're my God. together. <laughs> like, you know, you see a bit of your own reflection in that, and I'm like, there's someone out there like me who's not who's not judging me for wasting my potential or for being reckless or for being angry you know this person's seeing me before and, and giving me the chance to be myself before creating an opinion about me so do you see balloons in a different light now it's crazy but you know yeah. um, those we were when I came from it's not the worst Oh, wow. People keep asking about the balloons, but it's really any component that can uh, hold air, any, any anything that can fill a pocket of air. From your character, kind of where it is now as a pilot, uh, we have kind of the you know hard hard uh, kind of rebel kind of character, and kind of maybe the foil, maybe the love interest, maybe 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 both. How does your character grow throughout the season? Um, well, my character is just, she questions all of her motives and she questions herself because there is, I mean, she's striving for the, the freedom, liberation of all witches. Right. But that was never to any cost. Mm -hmm. And eventually, it turns out there is, there might be a very big personal cost to this. And that was no problem when there was just her in the world and everyone else had given up on her or she was alone. But falling so deeply in love and actually being seen for the first time just gives her new eyes. New eyes and then all of a sudden, what, what is it worth? And am I able, to, can I pay that price myself? And also then maybe reflecting on what have I done to other people? How, how is, like there's so much that's catching up with her. And so she's um, confronting that and at the same time, yeah, well it's, other people are confronting her too, so to say. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's uh, it's ending up to be, become very emotional and uh, a big personality change, which is uh, fun for a series. Not right. often that happens during just one season arc. Mm -hmm. How about Rael? Uh, in this season's arc for Rael, uh, I really think you see the most change in terms of her motivations. Uh, so you know it. Uh, it kind of all stems from the passing of her mother, but uh, her goal sort of changes. So at, at first she's like, I, you know, I'm going to end up with the same fate as my mother, so I might as well drive myself off this cliff, like Thelma Louise style, you know? Right. And then secondly, when she starts to understand her importance and, and how special she is and, and feeling loved, then I think it's more about making her mother proud. Lastly, I think it, it starts to take a darker turn again, and it's more about avenging her mother's death. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the series. You guys do a fantastic job in it. I really love that Freeform has given you this platform that you guys are using it so well. And to really impact. The credit is to them. Yes. Freeform definitely has been like pushing the line. Going They're really yeah. good yeah. It's taking yeah. risks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've like, never been so proud to be part of a project. Yeah. Never, yeah. ever in my That's life. Like really the best network. job. To be connected to you. Yeah, it's something really difficult. We all work really hard towards it. Yeah. I balls when I watch the trailer because I'm so fucking proud of it. to watch the last two years and pull It's very cinematic. Yeah. The, John Joffin, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's our cinematographer, and I, I've actually done another TV series with him, and he's yeah, he, he, it's, it's really interesting, interesting how he incorporates his cinematic feel to TV because it often loses that like it sort of uh, with the fast pace dribbles off. Yeah. yeah, you know, it just it, it becomes a bit more like soapy, you know. It really does, and he, the fact that they sort of held that aesthetic throughout the whole series, it's, it's very visually uh, pleasing. pleasing. Yes. Taylor, I will ask you, you gained such a big following in your last show as Pressure. 
and do you think those fans will love this show just as much? I really hope so. I mean, I guess it depends where your loyalties are. Like, I, I think if they're more of a fan of the show in general, then yes, but it's uh, just sort of tend towards uh, following my work and, and, you know, where else I go, then yeah, I think there will be um, a selection of people that will uh, pray to support me onto this next show. Or, or if not, just at least check it out out of curiosity. <laughs> you know? That's, I, I can only hope that... Um, Thank you guys all night, right? <laughs> Seriously, no, no, I mean, yeah, no. Thank you.